Given its very nature, the murky world of horror is obviously often overflowing with plenty of death, death, and just for good measure, a smidge more death. And while so many characters never see it coming, some, for better or for worse, become well aware of what's about to happen, giving them a few seconds to digest their fate, and in the monster movie subgenre, that fate can be particularly gnarly. So with that in mind, I'm Andrew from Culture Horror, and here are the 10 best, I'm dead and I know it, moments in monster movies. Number 10, Robert Muldoon at Jurassic Park. Few people are quite as appreciative of the Velociraptors and their capabilities as Jurassic Park's game warden Robert Muldoon. And even with his own death imminent, Muldoon can't help but admire the smarts and strategy of these stunning creatures. One of the most memorable deaths in cinema history, Muldoon has his gun locked, loaded, and a Velociraptor in his sights, ready to take the shot. The tension rises, the sweat pours, and the creature appears completely oblivious. That is, until the camera angle changes and we see another Velociraptor standing to Muldoon's left. Fully aware he's about to be ripped to shreds, Muldoon quips, clever girl, as he acknowledges how he's been played by these Velociraptors, one great hunter giving a nod of respect to another. Number 9, Tracy, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Thankfully, Ilphonic and Terrorvision's recent Killer Clowns from Outer Space video game has shone a spotlight on those creepy clowns for a whole new generation. And man, that game is such a whole bunch of daft fun. Speaking of the game, one of its clown talities, which is basically its finishing moves, pulls direct inspiration from one of the most memorable scenes of the 1988 movie. In the cult Kyoto Brothers classic, Tracy has an extremely minor, but extremely fondly remembered role, answering her door to the pizza carrying Jubby, who's joined either side by other clowns. From there, the pizza box opens to reveal the mischievous Shorty, who grins menacingly and fires up his cotton candy gun. As Tracy realizes, yep, there's no such thing as free pizza. Number 8, Luis, a creature from the Black Lagoon. In 1954's Creature from the Black Lagoon, poor Luis is the first victim of the eponymous monsters. Played by Rod Redwing, so minimal was his appearance that Luis wasn't even mentioned in the film's credits. However, that character played a pivotal role in setting the table for the film's Gilman threat. With an expedition crew having set up camp in the Amazon, Luis and his pal Tomas are alone in their research tent when Luis notices the eerie webbed hand of the creature come through the tent door, with Luis screaming in terror for a few seconds before he's killed off screen. And with that, the world of horror was introduced to one of the genre's most legendary characters. Number 7, Marlena Cloverfield. Released to huge buzz in 2008, found footage movie Cloverfield finds a New York that's been invaded by eerie monsters, with the giant clover doing the most damage. Are these monsters from space? Are they from the Earth's core? Maybe from the sea? Actually, as revealed in Cloverfield Kishin Manga, it's totally the sea. And Marlena is one of the characters attempting to stay alive in New York amidst the chaos and carnage. Initially feeling fine after being bit by one of the smaller monsters, Marlena is soon not feeling all that fine. Or as she put it, I don't feel so good, all as blood teams from her nose and eyes. Within seconds, Marlena is rushed behind a military screen, where we see her silhouette explode into a mess of blood and bits. Number 6, Fran Hewitt, The Blob, 1988. The 1988 version of The Blob is a perfect example of the brilliant, ooey-gooey practical effects work of the 1980s, with the fantastic Tony Gardner leading that effects work here. Great job, Tony and team. Out of the various magnificent kills on show here, one of the very best belongs to Fran Hewitt, a diner waitress who just watched poor handyman George slimed proper good and sucked through the diner's plumbing pipes. Rushing to a payphone, Fran is next on The Blob's menu, with the creature covering the phone booth, and Fran fully aware what's about to happen as the blob squashes the boob and assimilates her. Adding insult to all of this, the blob also has the face of Sheriff Geller staring at Fran, with Geller teased as Pam's love interest previously, before he was also assimilated. Number 5, Vasquez and Gorman, Aliens. Aliens took the horror and sci-fi of its predecessor and dropped in a big old dollop of action, partly in the shape of some colonial marines. And in amongst those marines, there's the utterly badass fire spirit in Take No BS Private Vasquez, and the well-meaning but inexperienced and fairly incompetent commanding officer, Gorman. By Alien's final act, we get an intense, claustrophobic battle in an air vent. And by this point, both Private Hudson and Slimeball Carterberg have already had their own great dead and they know it moments, but Vasquez and Gorman have an even more memorable death. With Xenomorphs closing in on the pair, and Vasquez having injured her leg, the two let off a grenade, sacrificing themselves, complete with Vasquez quipping wise with, you always were an 
a-hole, Gorman. Oh, Bob, she doesn't say a-hole, but if I say the proper word, we'll get decommissioned on this video, so use your imagination. Number four, CJ, Dawn of the Dead, 2004. Did George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead ever need any sort of remake? Absolutely 1000% not. It's a masterpiece. However, Zack Snyder's 2004 Dawn is pretty darn decent, bringing more intense action and high stakes than Romero's more nuanced, satirical original. The Snyder movie also has CJ, a power mad, self serving security guard who eventually becomes a badass zombie killer for the greater good, played excellently by the phenomenal Michael Kelly. As the movie draws to a close, CJ winds up stuck in the back of a truck while our survivors look to secure their supposed safety on a yacht. And after coolly taking out several zombies, CJ knows the odds are against him, letting out a couple of choice words, again, some of which can't be said on his video, of defiance before exploding some propane tanks, taking out the zombie horde and himself and buying his new pals some time to get to safety. Although, as the post credit scene shows that safety didn't really last a lot long to be honest. Number three, Lee Abbott, A Quiet Place. Probably the most emotional, hard-hitting moment on this video, A Quiet Place's Lee Abbott goes out in spectacular fashion, fully aware of his fate as he gave up his own life to save his family. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where blind aliens with extremely sensitive hearing run rampant, A Quiet Place brutally establishes its stakes early on by having these aliens kill young Bo Abbott. The point being, if you make even a slight bit of noise, you could well be dead in the blink of an eye. So when wounded family patriarch Lee realizes his other two children may be devoured during the film's final act, he takes a moment to show his love for them through American Sign Language before letting out a gut-wrenching heartfelt scream, drawing the aliens' attention and allowing his kids to make their escape. Although they will have witnessed their dad being brutally mauled by an alien, so trauma is going to be coming there. Number 2. Susan McAllister, Deep Blue Sea one could say that it's a nice slice of karma for you to get devoured by a genetically enhanced shark if you're the person responsible for enhancing that shark. This was the case for Dr. Susan McAllister in Rennie Harlan's Deep Blue Sea, with Doc Mack, which isn't actually a thing, carrying out some underhand altering of mako sharks as she looks to combat Alzheimer's disease. While that clause is clearly an extremely noble one, the practice here isn't exactly ethical, particularly as McAllister went against protocol to enlarge the shark's brains, making them far smarter than the average bear. They Boo -boo. At the end of Deep Blue Sea, it's just Dr. McAllister, Shark Wrangler Carter, Chef Preach, and the research facility that's flooding and sinking into the ocean, with one remaining Mako looking to make its break for freedom. The good doctor has the smart plan of making herself bait, slicing her hand open, jumping in the water, then making a swift exit once the shark comes over to her. And this plan works brilliantly, until it doesn't, with a loose climbing run causing Susan to fall back into the water, fully aware that she's about to be a shark snack. Number one, Dom, The Ritual. On the surface, 2017's The Ritual is about four friends on a hiking trip to Sweden in memory of a pal who was killed in the opening sequence. Of course, for anyone familiar with The Ritual, the film is that, and so, so much more. With trippy imagery, eerie hallucinations, and eventually a little bit of death, it becomes apparent that our characters have stumbled across a Swedish cult and the all-powerful godlike offspring of Loki, no, not Tom Hiddleston. By the final act, our survivors number just two, that'd be Dom and Luke, and they find themselves tied up in a basement. Now, fortunately for Dom, he's dragged upstairs and brutally beaten, and on his return to Luke, Dom realises that, yeah, he's a goner. Bloodied and battered, Dom implores Luke to make a run for it and pass a message on to Dom's wife, with Dom broken mentally and physically, now well aware he's shortly to be sacrificed to the Jotun beast Mudder. Sadly for Dom, he's absolutely right, and we soon see him tied to a post as Mudder emerges from the woods to savage him and kill him, which is kind of the same thing, 